Hi, I'm Will from Tustin. I'm Norm from Tustin. Norm, you've been testing out the Lenovo Yoga. We saw it at CES last year. How's the final product? And yes, this is the Lenovo Yoga IdeaPad series, 13.3 inches, uh, and I really like it. So it's an ultrabook with a touch screen. Touch screen's interesting because it's the first thing that we've seen that's a hybrid touch laptop. It runs a full version of Windows 8, not the RT designed for ARM. So it is primarily a real laptop. It's a real ultrabook, meaning that in, on the inside there is an Intel Core i5, 3317U processor running at 1.7 gigahertz. That's very comparable to what's running in the MacBook Air 11 inch, mm -hmm. a little slower than it's running on the MacBook Air 13 inch. But a common processor for Ultrabooks. Yes, full real laptop. Uh, accompanying that, four gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of solid state storage, and your typical array of ports. So you have a USB 2.0 port, there's one USB 3.0 port, an SD card reader, a full HDMI port, your audio jack, and buttons for volume and orientation lock and power. It's really odd that there's only one USB 3 port. I'd expect that on an Ivy Ridge laptop, both of them would be USB 3. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly why Lenovo chose to have only one USB 3 and the other be a USB 2. Other Ultrabooks have two USB 3 ports. So we know what the ports are, Norm, how's the screen? So the screen is a 13.3 inch IPS LCD, and I think the screen is really nice, has wide viewing angles, two people can watch a movie mm -hmm. on it at once. It's not as bright as I would like, but it's also not as glossy as other screens. Uh, and how does the touch work? The touch is a 10 point touch screen, but you're really not gonna ever gonna use 10 points all at once in Windows 8. Uh, what happens though, is that because it's touch, you end up leaving a lot of fingerprints on the screen. And, and so you said it's not as bright as you'd like. Can you use it outside? You can't use it in full daylight, but indoors in a normally lit room during daytime, it's totally fine. Even if the sun's coming in the window? Absolutely. So are you primarily using this as a laptop or as a tablet, Norm? Primarily as a laptop, as an Ultrabook. And performance wise, it is very comparable to all other Ultrabooks on the market. You're so, gonna be able to do all the things you normally wanna do on a laptop. So no compromises, computing, what about gaming? Not much gaming at all. You can play games like The Walking Dead with medium settings, uh, but not really anything like Team Fortress 2 or anything like even Modern Warfare. So no multiplayer and no kind of uh, modern single player games, even like Assassin's Creed or something like that. Not for gaming, for productivity. You can have tons of tabs open in Chrome and Internet Explorer. You can have Google Docs open. You can even do a Photoshop. It runs just as fast as in a normal computer or laptop. So then how do you integrate touch in your normal like desktop computing experience? So touch works on both the Windows start screen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those Metro style apps also on the desktop as well. Touch on a desktop is never the primary way to interface with this computer. You're always gonna be using the keyboard, the trackpad, which is nice, or a mouse. I prefer using a mouse. Touch is really used when you're browsing the web and you wanna pinch a zoom in Internet Explorer, that touch a link or a zoom in on an image. Use touch there, it really complements the computing experience. It doesn't replace any of the other interfaces. So you mentioned the trackpad's not so good. What exactly are your problems with it? Yeah, so it's a recessed trackpad. It's large enough, about four and a half inches, but the way multi-touch gestures work on the trackpad aren't the way I like them. It's much easier to swipe in from the actual touch screen to get to the charms than to and pinch the zoom than to actually use two fingers on the trackpad. And of course, because it's running a full version of Windows 8, you can run real x86 apps like Photoshop and Steam and Chrome that aren't available in the RT version that we saw in Surface RT. The Yoga 13 is perfectly competent as a notebook, mm -hmm. but as a tablet, if you flip the screen all the way around. Wait, what? I think it's actually not that great. It's too heavy at 3.3 pounds to hold with one hand, either in portrait or landscape orientation. Mm -hmm. And even with two hands, I still think it's at tw twice the weight of an iPad, too heavy to walk around as a tablet. How, how much heavier is it than the Surface? We thought the Surface was already too heavy, yeah, and it's, it's a, the same aspect ratio. It's about a pound heavier than the Surface. Plus, when you flip all the keys the way around, even though the keyboard's turned off, it's weird to hold and grip it by the keys and just use the screen. But the keyboard's recessed, so when you put it on a surface, what happens? When you put it on the surface, the keys don't actually touch the table okay. or the floor, uh, but and Lenovo does sell an extra case to cover the keys, but that, that's more money. But they're off anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So the laptop's clearly flexible. It's called the Yoga because the hinge bends in any position. Can it hold in any position? It can hold in any position. So the Yoga can be in this 10 position, being like an, almost an A-frame. Mm -hmm. I never really use it in this position. I prefer to use it in an easel stand position where the keyboard actually acts as almost a stand. And so that 
reduces the, the footprint of it, so you mm -hmm. can use this on small tables, on airplanes, or even in bed. And that means a heavy part of the laptop is the base and gives it some more stability than things like kickstands and, and the iPad cover and all that. I really like using this on the couch while watching TV, having this in this easel stand position, and putting it in the keyboard right on my lap, and then interfacing with just the touch screen. So how is touch as the primary interface for the tablet? Touch for the primary interface is great when you're in the Metro apps. On the desktop, if, if you're just web browsing, that's fine. If you want to actually do real computing, I think that even the pop-up keyboard isn't that great and you're going to want to use a real keyboard or plug in your own keyboard. So it's a laptop. Ultrabooks I know have minimum battery life specs, but how did this one perform? Battery life is great for a regular laptop. So if you're just browsing the web, watching light internet video, doing your daily tasks, you'll get about five hours, over five hours That's before pretty good. the battery is depleted. Yeah. But if you're doing things, intensive tasks like streaming video nonstop or turning the brightness up or playing games, you're not going to get more than about two hours of battery life. Wow. That's so, not so good. So don't expect to watch a full two and a half hour movie, maybe a TV show. So then what happens if you store the movie on the hard drive locally? You can store the movie on the hard drive locally, but you're not going to have a lot of space. So hmm. unfortunately, the base model comes with 128 gigs of storage, but Lenovo has partitioned them in a weird way, so you really only have about 75 gigs accessible to hmm. you before repartitioning. That's the 75 gigs out of 125 is crazy, crazy amount of storage to, to eat up by Lenovo. Yeah, that's really, really not usable. Uh, you can repartition the storages of the drive, and then you get about 100 gigs, but really then you're still living week to week trying to clean up your storage. So what are they putting on that extra space? It is backup and applications mm. and restore things and really it's an inefficient use of that space. That's unfortunate. Norm, you tested out the Best Buy exclusive version of the Yoga. Uh, what else is available? Which one is the one to buy? So this one is $1,000 exclusive to Best Buy. And what you get with that is a Core i5 processor mm -hmm. at 1.7 gigahertz with four gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage and an SSD. What I would actually go for is paying the extra $100 on Lenovo's website and getting double that RAM. Because I think eight gigs really helps when you're using all those Windows applications. But the fully loaded version for 1500 bucks? That one gives you twice the storage, 256 gigs, but you also get a Core i7 processor. It's a little pricey. It sounds like you really like the Yoga. It's a hybrid Windows tablet laptop. Laptop. Uh, I think, yeah, I really like the Lenovo Yoga 13 inch model, uh, but I think there was a lot more to talk about it. So let's sit down and get into the nitty gritty details. So, Norm, it's clear that you really, really like the I Lenovo really Yoga. I really like the Lenovo IdeaPad Yoga 13, but let's talk exactly about why. Uh, so, this is Lenovo Yoga, the one that we saw, same model as when we saw at CES in well, January. Well, it, we it's, saw an early it's, prototype. It's the production model yeah. of what we saw at CES. And we liked it then. But we like, I think I like it now for a different reason than we liked it then. So uh, when we saw it at CES, Windows 8 wasn't out yet. Right. Um, it was the first time we saw a laptop that could also be a tablet. And well, well that's, now come on. We had seen that in 2002, had, yeah, 2003, 2003 had, 2005, 2007. But we saw massive one, failures all around. Finally, that actually had a good touch interface because Windows 8 right. is optimized for touch. Well, with a with a capacitive touch interface mm -hmm. that we were accustomed to on on uh, phones and tablets, basically. Yeah. And so, like, okay, that, that was exciting. It's a it's a notebook, but also it potentially fulfills that need for a tablet because everyone kind of wants a tablet also. Well, but, uh, but that is not why. I like the Lenovo Yoga. The thing that was appealing to me about this was that as a, as a you know, running Ivy Bridge, which is a, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's not no compromises if you're doing high-end video editing and stuff like that, but for normal computing, you're not going to notice You're talking that about the Ivy Bridge. The Ivy Bridge Ultra, processor. The Ivy Bridge Ultra Low Voltage version. Right. Because Ivy Bridge for desktops is fine for all that stuff. Of course. But the, the mobile version of Ivy Bridge that's in Ultrabooks is, mm -hmm. is um, it's the same as in the 13-inch and 11-inch MacBook Airs, the most recent revision. Uh, it actually brings decent graphics and good CPU performance uh, in, into a, a you know, sub-three-pound notebook. Usually. So uh, this is technically an Ultrabook. And Ultrabook means, that's Intel's branding, it means that it does have uh, a core processor from Intel, which is Ivy Bridge, like you said. And if you compare it to something like a MacBook Air 11-inch, mm -hmm. uh, this actually has the same processor as the MacBook Air 11 inch. Oh really, the, so it's not the it's not the 13. version in the 13. Right. So in the MacBook Air 11 inch, if you bought one in 2012, it is the uh, Core i5 3317U, U meaning the ultra low voltage mm -hmm. version, uh, 1.7 gigahertz. That's what's in here. And ultra low um, voltage really just means that they clock everything down, down so that it can it uses less yes. power. But okay. when you need it, it'll clock up to 1.7 and it'll do you know turbo boost. Higher um, turbo boost is where one when when you're only using one of the two cores, the cores it cranks one way up and turns yes. the other off. Okay. When power when you plug power in and also um, it, yeah and it's dual core, 
So uh, it's not the same processor. It's not comparable to the 1.8 gigahertz uh, Ivy Bridge processor that's in the 13 inch, but that's all right. And of course, you can configure it, but this is right. the model that we have. Uh, Intel specs for Ultrabooks also say that if you're an Ultrabook, you must be at, uh, at least a maximum certain thickness. So Ultrabook is a like like Centrino before and a bunch of other Intel marketing uh, terms. Basically, it's just a set of specifications, and if if the manufacturers meet those specs, they can put that then sticker. they can put that sticker on, and they get some marketing money too. So they Intel exactly. helps them with ads. Yeah, so there there definitely is a sticker. It's Intel Ultrabook, uh, but Intel's their specifications, the requirements for Ultrabooks are a little vague. Uh, for example. If there's a touchscreen mm -hmm. on a laptop, then the maximum thickness that it ha can be to be called an Ultrabook is actually two millimeters thicker. And that's for the whole laptop or just the screen part? The whole laptop. Okay. So this is actually, this meets the requirements for a Ultrabook without uh, the touchscreen. Oh. So it's good. Okay. So, yeah. so, it's, so it's comparable to the non-touch mm -hmm. enabled Ultrabook. That yes. is impressive. Yeah. So, but you know, if you hold this and you hold a MacBook Air 13 inch, the MacBook Air 13 inch is going to feel lighter, it's going to feel thinner, because this doesn't have those crazy tapered edges. Mm -hmm. And this is um, a little bit over 3 pounds, right? It is 3.3 pounds, which is heavier than the 13 inch MacBook Air, and it's 0.67 inches, mm -hmm. uh, which is also thicker than the MacBook Air. But it's not a big laptop no, by no, no, any, no. Most any means. Most yeah. people who have old Dells or old, uh, even old Novos, uh, an Ultrabook, and haven't bought an Ultrabook, it's going to feel really thin to them. Uh, there's four gigs of RAM in this, okay. uh, which is expandable to eight gigs. Is that user expandable or you have to buy it from no, the factory? you have to buy it from the factory. Okay. Um, and also the storage is 128 gig SSD. Oh, so it's standard. So all Ultrabooks have to have SSDs, yes. no spinning hard drives. There's no spinning hard drive option at all in this. So how's the storage partitioned on the SSD? We'll get to that in a second, but not well. Okay. Uh, 128 is actually the bare minimum. I mean, so that's that, tight. The, 128 gigabytes is, is a small amount of storage it is, for it people is. who are using their computer, yes. especially if you're using it as your main computer. Yeah, because if you look at the MacBook Air 11 inches, those actually start at 64 gigs, mm -hmm. and that's unusable. Yeah. Um, so in addition, uh, being Ivor Bridge, that also means that it has uh, a USB 3 port. Okay. There's one USB 3 and one USB 2. I don't know why that they make both of them USB 3. Is, you know, Lenovo sometimes does one as like a supercharger port, so you can charge your phone or tablet with it. Yeah, I don't, um, I'm not sure if this is either of those is that. Uh, but like, for example, the MacBook Air has two USB yeah. 3. So it's not like they needed to add, add extra controller on there. Uh, but the ports on one. either side, though, so that's convenient. Yeah, ports on either side, and then there's a HDMI port, full-size HDMI, hmm. uh, and then you have volume rockers, but we'll get to that in a second, and uh, SD uh, card reader. Oh, okay. Is it, a, uh, is it a like card. a door, or does it just pop? That's it, just a placeholder yeah, in there now? It's a placeholder. Pops out. You put the okay, SD card good. in there. And, of course, uh, there's a button uh, for the screen rotation, and we'll get to that in okay. a second. So it, it, uh, and, well, and we should talk about the power brick, too, because if you're familiar with Lenovo yeah. power bricks... There's actually a new power brick port. Well, they had Lenovo. this on the X1 last year, because it was too yeah. thin as well. So this is this is a, a little boxy one. Right? Um, and it's the, they're equivalent to the MagSafe. It's a really sturdy design. It's, it's, sturdy. it's not magnetically easily. attached. No, no. But it is sturdy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and you know, and it breaks loose if you, if, you, if you kick your laptop. If you kick yeah, the power cord, it breaks loose rather than yes. drag your laptop on the floor, which is the important thing. I like this more than the, the circular ones that were not tight. Yeah. Those, those just popped out. Yeah. Okay, so it's a laptop. And uh, performance-wise, if you compare this to uh, other Ultrabooks, very comparable. So, of course, it's going to be a little different here and there. Uh, but everything you want to do on a normal laptop, you can. So it's no compromises as a laptop when you're talking about Ultrabooks. That's not a gaming laptop, yeah. an Ultrabook laptop. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it open right now. Okay. And, of course, it is a new computer, so it's running Windows 8. Mm -hmm. um, the screen yeah. is a 13.3-inch screen. So that's so why it's called the Lenovo Yoga 13. So it's a big, it, it's, and how does that compare to other laptops in the kind of Ultrabook range? They, they're all around uh, 13 inches. Okay. So it's, the bezel's a little, a little wide for a 13 inch, um, but uh, what but I do you like... You kind of have to have that when it's in tablet mode, right? I, I guess so. Um, I mean, it, it's, a, it, it's, it's noticeable bezel. Okay. It's also a uh, 1600 by 900 resolution IPS screen. Oh, so that's a little low resolution. Well, it's actually higher if you compare it to a MacBook Air 13 I guess inch. that's true. MacBook Air 13 inch is, I think, 1440 by 900. That's right. And this is 1600 by 900. Okay. So, so it's actually, it's, little... I think it's a nicer screen than the MacBook Air one, uh, not just because it's a touch screen. So is it 16 by 10 instead of it 16 is, by no, 9? It's, it's, 16, it's 16 by 9. 16 by 9? Okay. Yeah. Um, and the viewing angle is very nice. So if you look, I can turn it over and you can see, like, if, yeah, so when I was we're, in a, we're at a big angle right now, mm -hmm. but I can see it clearly. Oh, I, I can think see you can see great, it clearly. Yeah. And if we both were watching like Netflix on this, then no problem. So you could you could put this between two seats on an airplane and, easily, and watch a movie together. Easily between two seats. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about the screen uh, was that the brightness doesn't get as bright as I want. So 
I'm going to swipe in mm. because it is uh, a touchscreen. And also, and it's we'll a lot that. easier to do that with the touch stuff. And this is the maximum brightness, 300 nits. Can you use that outside? I, I don't think you can use it outside. Okay. It's not super reflective, um, but it's not as bright. I mean, indoors it's fine, and you can you can set the minimum uh, in Windows. That's confusing. We'll and does it will that. it auto configure in Windows or no? Uh, it'll do whatever you set it to in the Metro Windows settings. So okay. we talked about that in the Windows 8. Uh, so that's a little confusing. So this is running Windows 8 x86 though, not this RT. This is the real Windows 8. So it's not like the Microsoft Surface RT. Okay. Uh, I'm in desktop right now. You can install course. Chrome and Steam and Windows applications on this if you so desire. Yeah. So there's a, there's the start screen right now. And um, I found myself, of course, because this is Windows 8 Pro, using this in the desktop mode. So I just hit that Command D. Mm -hmm. I'm in desktop everything I'd want to do. So I can show you, um, and we'll get to that trackpad in a second, but you know, it, it's Windows 8 Pro, it's you know, a Core i5 right here, four gigs mm -hmm. of RAM. Four gigs of RAM I think is, is okay, it's the bare minimum I'd want for a modern computer these days. Well, I mean, when you increase RAM, you also decrease battery life, so yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's the kind of thing you want to keep in mind when you're, when you're specking out a new laptop. So everything you'd want to do, you know, I, I use Google Docs, so I have tons of tabs open, I have Google Docs open, um, and I had, you know, and, and cat and, videos, and, the yep. whole nine yards, Every, play, playing video, flash video is fine. HTML5 video is fine. Photoshop. I'm, I'm like right now in Photoshop. I have a 35 mega, uh, 35 megabyte TIFF and, you know, editing images in Photoshop is no problem. Well, this I can is, even show you like running a batch process. I mean, everything you expect from Ultrabook. Cause this is indicative of a modern laptop. I mean, you shouldn't of, have yeah. performance problems with a thousand dollar laptop. And the reason point. I'm like reinforcing all this, and I'm, I'm doing a batch process right now, it'll go by relatively quickly, even comparable to my desktop speed, mm -hmm. is that this is not a tablet. Right. Um, it's, a fully, it's a fully functioning computer first that also yeah. is a tablet, not a tablet that's also a, a, a kind of a yes. laptop. And so using it as a, a laptop, you know, the keyboard has this little, it's a recessed keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a fine keyboard in Lenovo, makes it's really good keyboards. Very Apple-like, that keyboard. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like curved chiclet keys. Uh, it's recessed because I will have to fold it back in a second. But okay, I'll, I'll stop this Photoshop uh, script right now. Um, but also, uh, the trackpad I think is not their best trackpad. You know, I, so I use the trackpad a little bit. I find like my when my hands are damp, I find bad trackpads. I have no problem with. Um, if your hands are dry, then I find that I have I, I had trouble with that trackpad. Yeah, the trackpad's pretty big. I don't think it's I don't know if it's glass or not. It's about it's close to five inches. It's four point eight inches okay. or so as I measured it. And it does um, do multi multi finger touch and stuff like that. Like you do two finger scrolling in the I browser. I could do two finger scrolling. So if I'm in Chrome, then you know it does the natural scrolling. Um, but because it's also also Windows eight, uh, these laptops also have to have the gestures on the side. So for example, oh. if I swipe in. Inside, I get the charms. So is that in from the from off the trackpad or from the edge of the trackpad? Because on on a on a touch screen on the surface, yeah. you come in from the bezel in. Yeah. You you think that it's from off the trackpad in. Yeah. Right. But no, it that off work. the trackpad works sometimes, not always. Mm. It's actually from the edge of inside the trackpad in, and because it's recessed a little bit, I actually don't like. It. Oh, so it's not it's not flush with the it's surface. It's not flush with. Oh, that's the, unfortunate. The I mean, it's, it's, it's a little recessed. So when you're using the trackpad, it's multi-touch, right? Yeah, so there's, there's multi-touch on because that's a requirement of Windows 8. Um, but because this trackpad is not exactly uh, flush with the laptop, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't act the same way I'd want it to behave. So for example, on Microsoft Surface, uh, if you come in from the side of the bezel, you can swipe and get charms so right. not, from the right to, to left. It's one of those things that works great on touch devices and terrible with a mouse and keyboard and, and okay with a trackpad. What Microsoft requires on trackpads for Windows 8 to 24, because mm -hmm. not everyone, all laptops will have uh, a touch screen is that you can you swipe in from the right also to activate the charm. So I would think coming in from on the laptop on, yeah, and Doesn't as I'm work. moving, it's yeah, I'm, I'm going slowly, mm -hmm. not not activating. But if I start on the trackpad and move in, oh, it that's works. when it pops in. Oh, weird. And I, I'm not that that is not intuitive to me if I'm using the trackpad as a metaphor for touch. But screen. it's a clicky trackpad as a whole. There's no buttons. Yeah, it's, it's clicky. Um, is it two finger to right click and stuff like that or not so much? Uh, you can turn that on, yeah. It, it seems to me using trackpads in OS X where clearly they're designing OS X to use trackpads now is a dramatically superior trackpad experience to using trackpads in Windows where you still lack a lot of the gestures and stuff that make yeah. I think OS X better on trackpads than on mice and keyboards. So mostly I use a mouse with this. I okay. use it as if it was a laptop. I don't even you use a mouse with your MacBook too, just yeah, to exactly. be fair. Yeah. I, I use a mouse. I think a mouse is always going to be superior in precision to a trackpad. Um, but now let's get to this touchscreen. Okay. 
Because this so, is this is the thing that makes this this laptop special, yeah. and this is why you would choose this over other Ultrabooks theoretically, yes. uh, uh, like uh, last year Ultrabook, yeah. Sandy Ridge Ultrabook running Windows Seven. Um, because I'm in the desktop, and the desktop does support touch. Mm -hmm. So this is a ten point touch screen, so you have ten fingers on at once. And if I'm in, uh, for example, the start screen, mm -hmm. Windows Eight, what Microsoft wants you to use, it works like a normal touch screen. It's right, very I mean, responsive. It, I assume this is very going to be very similar to Windows Surface. It looks a lot faster than the Surface RT did. Just to just from what I've used with a little bit of hands-on time mm -hmm. and watching you use having it. a real processor, yeah, definitely helps. Well, having more RAM definitely helps. X eighty six processor. X eighty six. I think processor. the ARM folks would probably be really upset. Yeah, if you called yeah, them not yes. real. Um, uh, but how does the desktop work with touch? Because so, I found desktop on the Surface to be kind of crappy. So what I found is that on the touch on the desktop, uh, because I have other options such as a keyboard and mouse. Plug my mouse in. You can't plug uh, that into the HDMI port. Or yeah. My, then it's it's I use my mouse and keyboard. So for example, if I'm browsing the web mm -hmm. and I have tested open, you know, I actually do find myself scrolling with You reach out and use your finger. Yeah. And and mostly not just for scrolling, it's for pinch and zoom. So for example, in Chrome, I, I get scrolling and you know, I could use the mouse here, but it, if I use a mouse wheel, it stutters a little bit. It's one it's one, the chunk, it's right? One chunk at a time, same Three with lines. precision for up and yeah. down. But if I scroll, I get, I get a little bit momentum. And you get the that. momentum with the two-finger trackpad scroll too, right? Yes. But um, I, get, I think it's a little more precision if you're using the touch. So one thing that was interesting is they use on the trackpad natural scroll. So what I would consider reverse scroll. When you push up, the page goes, it is, scrolls down. It is down. to mimic your touching a screen. Oh, so does that apply on the on the mouse as well? When you roll up, does it go up? No, when you roll up, it goes up. Okay, good. It goes down. Okay. Um, but only in IE is there actually pinch zoom, which is where I'm really using this. So okay. for example, if I'm on something like Reddit and all the links are small, mm -hmm. right? I, I can scroll in IE, but I can also pinch the zoom, and this is the language I'm used to now on tablets. I know that uh, Chrome actually implements touch to, uh, the pinch to it's, zoom. It's, you have to download. You have to download the, the dev version. The I dev think, version right? adds a little more gestures. Uh, default Chrome does not, so okay. I'm actually using IE right now. Um, so I'm noticing as you're touching this, I'm noticing the bezel is bouncing back and forth a lot. Yeah, and Do that's you find that annoying? Thing. Or? Um, so this is the standard laptop configuration, mm -hmm. and it's called the Yoga because they have poses. Right. Um, so there are three poses aside from this. I'm going to detach my mouse now. You're demousifying. Yep. So the first pose we're going to talk about is the tablet pose. Okay. And so this is the the version. The, the as a stance. real fat tablet. And you know, if you have like a, a MacBook Air mm -hmm. or even a MacBook, the motion you're able to tilt is like this much. Yeah, it's like it's like seven. Right. You can't even do or 120 degrees. Yeah, probably. you can't even do a, a full 180 degrees. Right. Here well, Lenovo's do, always been able to do the full 180 degrees. That's, right. that's been one of their things for a really long time. I don't know who actually uses it in full 180 degrees. Gordon, because, Gordon uh, always I'm used not to exactly love sure. Yeah, may, maybe some people have stands that yeah. work that way. Uh, but here it is as in, in tablet mode. Well, so, okay, but when it's folded back, you're handing, handling the keyboard on the I back. Yeah, so I'm actually hitting the keys. The keys automatically turn off. Oh, And okay. Windows assumes that there is no keyboard attached. Okay. Um, do, you, so for, do you know if that's a mechanical trigger? Is that part of the it, switch? It or is it like magnets in the back or I, something like that? I, I think it's a, it's a it must be a hardware thing because okay. the software is fooled and think you know, there's no keyboard attached anymore. Or trackpad, I see. Yeah, so for example, if I'm uh, turn, uh, turned off in sleep mode and now I'm, I've started on mm -hmm. and I've, uh, I'm wiping away from the screen. Does it make the little badoop noise when it disconnects yeah. and reconnects? It does no badoop noise. Okay. Um, now it's popping up uh, an on-screen keyboard mm -hmm. as opposed to using... Oh, so it actually knows. It knows that the keyboard is disabled and okay. I'm in tablet mode. So I'm going to get back in here. So It's a lovely lock screen you have, by the way. Yeah, it's a good lock screen. So right now, tablet mode, I never use it like this in tablet mode. Too, is it too heavy it's or too just heavy. Way you don't like heavy. Windows 8 tablets? No, no, it's way, way too heavy. Okay. Uh, regardless of whether I like Windows 8 tablets or not, this is 3.3 pounds. Yeah. Not possible to use it with one hand. It's two iPad 3s, basically. Holding iPad it fours. with two hands, it's 13 inches, which is really big. Mm -hmm. Maybe if like you had a picture and you really want to show someone a picture. Yeah. Or if you were in a, maybe in a meeting and wanted to have your notes open but didn't want to have the whole laptop out. I don't know. Yeah. I, no one's going to really carry it around like this. Did you, you know, find touch was good enough to use with the desktop when you're when you didn't have the, the keyboard and mouse? The there? touch targets are small. Okay. Uh, like they have been. I mean, even though they've optimized, for example, if I if I'm browsing through images, you can manipulate using touch. What you're doing right now looks profoundly uncomfortable. Yeah, this is like this is not accurate at all. If I want to like add a new folder, like it's that small touch target, you have mm -hmm. to be really precise. Can um, you two finger tap to right click or anything like that? How does that? You can hold work? down. Okay. And it's then the it pops up the menu. Hold. Okay. Press and hold. As as is a cus, uh, standard as same, now. Same with RT, yeah. 
Um, and if you open things, you know, programs like Windows Preview, uh, which I love using with like a mouse, the Photo Viewer, Photo Viewer, yeah, uh, you get pinch and zoom there, but it's not accelerated. It's just, it's a little stuttery if you can see right there. Oh, so I mean, it's not bad, but it's definitely it's not bad. I've seen better for sure. It's not as smooth as it, you'd expect if you're you had like you know iOS or when you're using even when you're using Photoshop where it's rendering it as like a 3D canvas and you or can even if you're in uh, the Windows Start screen you're using the the pinch to zoom in those photo viewers. So how do other third party apps that aren't Microsoft's work with the touch? I mean we've talked about Chrome a little bit. How does Photoshop work? Does Photoshop work at all with touch? No, nope, it assumes that your your finger is a mouse. So you're you're yeah. mimicking a mouse, which is kind of a bad experience. Do all not around. use Photoshop with just touch. Okay. Use it with use it with the mouse. Um, so. This tablet mode, I mean, they do sell a cover that if you don't like feeling the keyboard mm -hmm. or if you're going to put this on dirty surfaces. Like your coffee shop and somebody spilled a coffee. They do here. sell a cover uh, that you can slide over the keyboard. That when seems you're like just mode. one more thing to have you're to just carry, though. More thing to carry, plus it adds a little more thickness. How much is it? Weight. Do you I don't know how much it costs. Was it expensive or was it like $30? Yeah, it's like between $30 and $50. Okay. Um, so don't use it in t this, this mode, uh, but I do use it. Well, there's another mode I'll talk about is this little tent mode. That looks like an easel norm. That's that's a that's a tent tent frame a frame mode, um, and the screen. So is this for like is this for team programming where one person sits on one side I don't and writes know the who's code in, who's in and the business. other person watches them and makes sure it's good? I, I don't know who's in use. And there's a button there. I just tapped it for auto rotate. So it okay, it's a it's a toggle right here. Oh, so it just it, instead of shaking it, it just triggers yeah, the auto rotate off on off on. I'll turn it auto rotate on. Uh, the reason to have auto rotate off is because who really wants to use their tablet um, in in this mode, right? In the, in well, why mode. would you hold it up like yeah. that if you didn't want it in that mode? Uh, that's why you have an off auto rotate. Oh, okay. So you, so it doesn't swap when you're. So when you're saying holding. there's no use for portrait. Yeah. In, don't on don't, the don't, don't use don't use portrait. Okay. So this easel mode looks kind of this looks like kind of what you would use if you were on an airplane watching a movie or something like that, right? Uh, this is actually not what I would use because I think the angle it, it's not pointing it's too at, low. at you. It's okay. pointing kind of. Your chest, not your face. And can it? Does it? Ha, is it fixed in these angles, or can no, it, it move freely I mean, it, it between? It moves freely, and they're, it's pretty rigid. Okay. So like, you know. So it looks like it'll hold. I mean, yeah. Do you feel like this hinge is going to age well? This seems like the kind of thing that would be awesome for six months, and then as it kind of gets in play, I have used it for six to... months. It's it's a fairly it's a fairly rigid okay. hinge. Okay. Um, the other mode I'll go to now that I do like. Hmm. Is now this is. This is the easel mode. When I had when I had old tablet PCs, like 2002, 2004 era tablet PCs that you could flip up and rotate, the screens would actually spin around. I used them like this a lot, um, especially for airplanes and stuff like that. Yeah. So this one reduces. Uh, it puts the screen closer to you, mm -hmm. and the keyboard then becomes a stand. The keyboard, the keys are touching, and, but the they're surface. still off. They're still off, uh, and that's why they're recessed, which I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. So it's not actually touching the surface. So you don't get them you're stuck not going to put this in on you know bubble gum or you know, syrup or something. Um, and here I can use, you know, the desktop or I can, I can browse the web on the desktop, which I typically do like this. Now this is where the wobbly part comes in a little bit. Mm. So as I'm, I'm moving around, it's wobbly well, it's a little pretty bit. wobbly. It's, I mean, do you notice, notice it when you're sitting right nope, in front of it? Not noticing okay. it when I'm, when I'm looking at it. And if I'm just browsing the web, you know, and click links, and this is extremely useful. And this works on your lap too. So I'm sitting on the couch and I'm putting my lap underneath here. Oh, so instead of trying to use like a, one of the trifold iPad stands or something like that, this or, gives or you the a Microsoft big base. Surface, yeah. where you have a kickstand, the kickstand out and then a, and a keyboard on your lap. Yeah. This this doesn't feel wide, awkward on your lap. No, this is a wide kickstand, and this screen is closer to you. You can angle it however you want to angle it. Well, and most of the mass of the laptop is going to be in the bottom part. And the touchscreen is really responsive. Or you know, if I want to watch a movie, I can just throw up Netflix, and Netflix is really great in this easel mode. Hmm. And you like laying in bed. We haven't gone on any yeah. trips lately, but I assume like this is going to fit on the airplane much better than your traditional laptop, where where when the guy behind in front of you reclines back, your laptop gets exactly. crunched between right the, because the on on, on, a, on an airplane, you know, you have this keyboard, mm -hmm. and the most you can do is you know push it as far away from you as yeah. possible, or it gets real close. Well, or you can make it flat and put it vertical and hope that the guy in front of you doesn't recline. Yeah. No. And, this yeah. this is the ideal situation. Uh, to use uh, on an airplane, or I mean, it, it basically it, it is a tablet that you don't have to touch. It's pretty compelling. I, I mean, in in that regard. So, how about let's talk about performance a little bit. How, how you we've already touched on this a lot, but we didn't talk about games. Okay. And I mean, one of the selling points of Ivy Bridge is that it should be able to handle games. I mean, I played a little bit of game of OS X compatible games on my 13-inch MacBook Air. Um, we've seen some other Ivy Bridge laptops that that you can do 
you know, light gaming on. Yeah. Uh, what have you played? What works? What doesn't? So uh, Ivy Bridge has the Intel Graphics HD 4000. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was twice as fast as Sandy Bridge, which was last year's. And Sandy Bridge was, I, I would say, maybe almost adequate, seems like, from what I, we... For, I mean, for for very, very light gaming. Very, Playing FTL and very, StarCraft. Very, very light gaming and watching yeah. video. Uh, and, you know, when we got our MacBook Airs, like when you got your 13-inch one this year, you were able to play Team Fortress 2 on it. Kind of. Kind of. It's yeah. exactly the situation Like, here. not native resolution. Right. You turn the resolution down a little bit, and you can you can have an okay experience. Yeah, so if you play TF2 here, and you want to turn on the graphics, and maybe have native resolution, because remember, this has a higher resolution screen than your right. MacBook Air, uh, you're going to get about 30 frames per second when stuff is going on. So... And when more stuff is going on, like in, when we have like bots, if you're playing and stuff, Man versus Machine, or then something it's like going to go down to 25, 20 frames. Per second. So probably better playable. for single player games than multiplayer yeah. games. So for example, a single player game here is uh, The Walking Dead, and uh, I can play The Walking Dead. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna spoil too much. And this is a surprisingly, um, this is a game that's that's a little bit uh, um, uh, uh, challenging. Like there's there's a little bit of render. It's not. A 2D game. It's not yeah. a typical adventure game. It, but I'm running this going on. native resolution, uh, medium settings, mm -hmm. and completely playable. Okay. Played an entire episode on here. Even the Twitch parts. Even the Twitch part. I mean, the tw it's not really that Twitch. I guess it, uh, I guess it's yeah. easier on the with the mouse and keyboard than it is on the. On yeah. The, the so if you, if you look at it right now, I mean, there are no spoilers, but it is hmm. running perfectly smooth in this cutscene. Um, there are dead people. I'm gonna quit out of here now because I don't want to spoil too much of the game. The captions, uh, but gaming. So, so you played an entire. You played an yeah. episode. Everything's yeah, you, fine. You could play that on this. You know, Plants of Zombies. Your typical casual games work fine here. And again, Just because don't it's x eighty six, it's all the stuff from Steam. All so stuff. all your PopCap and Bejeweled and all that kind of stuff works. Mm -hmm. um, what, what about more intense games? Uh, you're not going to be able to play more intense games. So any anything like Assassin's Creed, even Modern Warfare. Okay. Not any of that. Wow. Cod blops, no cod blops. No cod blops. Oh. No cod blops. What about what about old cod blops? Uh, I think Modern Warfare Four might be okay. You mean Call of Duty Four Modern Call, Warfare? Call of Duty Four Modern okay. Warfare One hmm. might, might be okay. Hmm. But that's that's not real gaming. Okay. Um. So, uh, one last thing I want to talk about. Uh, oh, the volume rocker. Okay, is, is a little weird. So, so they've all, they've had spinners on Lenovo laptops in the past. It's, it's two buttons, volume up and volume down. And they're are they just momentary buttons? So uh, you you tap them. So I'm in this traditional laptop mode. I would think that pressing this top button here would mm -hmm. increase the volume, right? That's actually to decrease the volume. Oh, but because it's going to be upside down when it's flipped around yeah. in tablet and mode. And that's not smart enough to oh, that's a bummer. switch uh, when I'm uh, in the laptop. Mode. You'd think that would be the case. What about uh, what about the top row keyboard shortcuts? Top they, row keyboard, everything. It's all the normal stuff. All normal stuff. Volume, brightness. Uh, so I gotta mode, think you're probably gonna use the volume on the on the top row. Yeah, you can do that. I mean, I, more than I, I'm I'm accustomed to hitting the stuff on the side. The power button's on the bottom now. Okay, um, that's a little weird. And it, it's I mean, when you, in old laptops, I never really put them in sleep mode. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm doing that with this. Do you actually put it in sleep mode, or do you just close the lid? Uh, I close the lid, or you know, if I'm using it. Like this, I actually mm -hmm. hit the button because okay. Windows 8 isn't fast to, to boot up. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they want to make it like a tablet. So the, the boot up time to get back into that lock screen, no problem. Um, so, one big problem though yeah. is storage. Now, we alluded to this earlier. Yeah. Uh, there's 128 gigs of storage mm -hmm. on here. Uh, a standard. You mean it has a 128 gigabyte drive? It has a 128 gigabyte Samsung. Uh, SSD. Is that user upgradable or is that soldered to the motherboard? Not, so, not user upgradable. Okay. I don't have my uh, mouse plug in, of course. Uh, but of the 128 gigs, even if you take away that binary decimal conversion, um, what you have is only about 100 gigs usable. And that's only if you Hold fix on. the partitions. So why? So the binary decimal conversion is going to lose what, like four gigs, probably. Yeah. yeah. So you, theoretically, after Windows installed, or even to show what they should show is, you know, one twenty-five, one twenty-four right. gigs. Uh, what you get is one partition with sixty-four gigs. Okay. And one partition with twenty-five gigs. What's the second partition for? It's Lenovo stuff. Why? Lenovo why hold on. So they put a fifth of the drive. Yeah. With what are the Lenovo apps? Are they anything any good? No. Uh, McAfee. Really? McAfee. Drivers, McAfee, 14.4 gigs used right now with whatever application. Why on earth would they do that? That's terrible. I have no idea. So uh, you can repartition re it. And, okay. And, and, and this typically is a hidden partition. So, I mean, just to be clear, typically you do this 
because they have like the res restoration tools and yeah. stuff like that on there. So and, if you and need that, to wipe the, your machine. Yeah, so the backup stuff is there. But Windows 8 does that. Windows 8 stores all your information somewhere. Like it's already built in. That, that, that functionality already happens with Windows 8 unless they turned it off. That's ridiculous that they would use 25 gigs for that. But even when you join these these uh, these partitions, mm -hmm. all you're going to get is about 100. You mean gigs. if you merge, if you, you merge if you delete them. the second one and expand yeah. the first one or whatever? It is. All you're going to get is 100 gigs. That's still not. That's nowhere near enough storage if this is your primary computer. That is not enough. Um, I have 128 on uh, my MacBook Air, and mm -hmm. I plug. Uh, I work a lot off a USB hard drive, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people, if you're not moving a lot with this, will have to buy a uh, a USB three hard drive. Uh, so, I've used a 64 gig MacBook Air before. My current one is 256 mm -hmm. gigs. 256, I think, is really usable if you if you don't do a lot of media work you don't and don't think, store. You don't have to think about it. Yeah, it's something I. It's it's a it's a every three months problem, not an every week problem. Yes. Um, 128, it definitely is a every week problem. Where if yeah. you you work on a project, you have a ton of video files you want to store on a desktop. Um, and no, you're downloading it's not stuff. Work. You're going to have to go clean that out and throw that back it up onto a USB hard drive. Well, and, and that's it. once you've deleted that Lenovo partition and expanded your. I mean, yes. when you start, you're almost closer to like the 64 gigabyte Mac, and and with that, you just can't. You have to be really diligent about never downloading anything. Basically, yeah. it's a it's a real exactly. hassle. Or adjusting it so all your documents are on separate. You know, on, yeah. on the hard drive. Well, you live in the cloud at that point. You yeah. use you use RDO or Spotify and Google Docs and that kind of stuff. Um, let's talk yeah. about price. Sure. Uh, this particular version is a special version. As reviewed. Uh, as reviewed. Uh, that's only sold at Best Buy. So okay. it's $1,000, which I think uh, is a fair price for Ultrabooks. That's a smoking deal. Yeah. That seems like well, a you know, I, I think we're biased because we, we own a lot of MacBook, MacBook Air well, that's and Mac true. products. And I think a lot of people buying PCs who might not, who might not have Ultrabooks are still more accustomed to the $7,800 laptop. I mean, students, I think $7,800... No, I know, I know. That, that is what people pay but for laptops. I, I'm thinking even in context with other Lenovo's, Lenovo's typically one step above the Compaq or the HP and the Dell, um, at least on the, the consumer models that you find at Best Buy. Yeah, that's, that's why, I mean, this is their idea path line, so right. it's, it's not the business line. Right. Uh, I think $1,000 for what you get here, because if you compare that to a 13-inch MacBook Air, mm -hmm. right, a comparable processor, 100 megahertz less, high-resolution screen, mm -hmm. touch screen, has these different poses, Yeah. Uh, if you're not invested in OS X and, or, or Windows, I think this is a better buy than the MacBook Air 13-inch. Not, not having used the touchscreen, I'm still a little skeptical of the touchscreen. I'm not a huge Windows 8 fan, as is no pretty one, apparent. No one, again, you don't have to use the touchscreen. Right. And if you're just using it as a laptop, treat it as a laptop with a keyboard and mouse, it is a fine laptop with a keyboard and mouse. But guess what? If you're in a picture and you want to do a pinch to zoom, you can do a pinch. And, and higher resolution screen is a big deal. Higher resolution screen. It's not going to be the, the quote unquote retina screen. Right. Um, 1600 by 900, I think, is the lowest you'd want resolution screen you'd want on a 13 inch uh, Ultrabook. Uh, some of these, like the Dell one, goes full HD, 1920 by 1200 uh, or 1080. Um, but I think 16 by 9 is, is definitely usable. So they have other versions of this yoga available as well. Yeah, so if you well. don't want to buy it at Best Buy and you just want to pay $1,000 mm -hmm. on the Lenovo website, um, the, the uh, base model is actually Core i3. So what's the difference in the i3 and the i5? I, Core, I, Core i3 is basically last gen. It's, it's not just clocked down, oh. but it's, it's almost like a... So it's different graphics architecture and everything? It's the same. I think it's the same graphics architecture. Don't get the Core i3. Okay. Core i5 is the base. You That's where get. you want to go. That's where if you you're spending $1,000 on a if laptop. You're, yeah. So get the Best Buy one if you're okay with, uh, if you're okay with spending $1,000. Okay. If you want to pay a little more, uh, on Lenovo's website, you can get 8 gigs of RAM. Mm -hmm. And with the Core i5, that's for $1,100. Okay. So that's, Maxed that's, out. That's, that's, and that's with 8 gigs of RAM, though. That's so this is only with RAM, 4. This is 4 gigs That's worth RAM. 100 bucks to me. I think, I think that's worth 100 bucks. Uh, if you don't know about the Best Buy deal, the difference between Core i3 and mm -hmm. i5 plus double the RAM, yeah. I think it's worth 100 bucks. What's the difference? Um, what's the battery life like? We didn't it's talk about that. Five, five hours. Okay. Which, uh, this, the, is that web browsing or video watching or that's what? Both web browsing with a little bit of video watching. Like kind of normal use? Yeah. Normal use, nonstop, literally sitting here five hours, and then you get the warning that it's going to power off. Okay. Um, if and I'm, that's medium brightness, I assume? Medium brightness. Okay. Watching Netflix. It's only about a little over two hours. Oh, streaming! Ouch! Streaming. Yeah, so you're, so you're not, not going to watch... watch entire movie. Oh. On, like a, you're not going to watch Dark Knight Rises on Netflix. Well, you like, can watch the first two acts, you can, but you act can watch half. you know a, a 96 minute Disney movie. What um uh what about did you watch local movies at all on it or didn't bother because of the storage no. constraints? Yeah. So you, if okay. you did local movies, it would be off a of USB hard drive. I would not recommend 
storing this with you know TV. And then when you do the USB hard drive, you're going to hit yeah, your battery exactly. probably even worse. Exactly. Um, what, they also do an 11 inch version of this, right? Uh, yes, but I want to talk about the, uh, the the max out model. Okay. So if you want to pay, uh, the max out is $1,450. Uh, which is so it's adding another 350 bucks. Same chassis though. Same chassis is what you do, then get is a Core i7. Okay. With eight gigs of RAM and also 256. And storage. the Core i7 just enables hyper threading. It's not actually four cores. Uh, it's still not four cores. Okay. Uh, but it's higher higher clocked as well. Okay. Um, so th I think that's expensive because you add tax mm -hmm. and shipping on that, and then you're in the six hundred dollar sixteen hundred dollar range. It seems like the sweet spot is like a thousand eleven hundred dollars somewhere yeah. in there for this. A thousand plus tax is already eleven hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, and then there is an 11 inch model. Okay. But that seems interesting. That seems like it'll be a lot lighter, right. a lot more tablet. Or maybe you're comparable right? to a MacBook Air 11, right? Uh, unfortunately, that is an RT only. Oh, so it's an ARM processor. I think it's either ARM or it's, uh, it's the, uh, the Intel RT. Okay. Um, but it's, it's not full x86. So you can't run x86 can't, apps on it. You can't do Windows 8 Pro. And so that means you can't run Chrome, you can't run Steam, you can't well, run Well, you Photoshop. can run the Metro version of Chrome. There's no Metro version of Chrome on RT. Well, then you can't run yeah. Chrome. Yeah. Then that's it. I would, um, I would not recommend that. I think at this point it's safe to say we should not recommend RT yeah. tablets at all. Well, at be, least because this then it's also you have the keyboard fixed for that, and there's no point of having a fixed keyboard. Like some oh, right. some RT tablets have a detachable. Yeah, yeah. That you can use it in the the real tablet mode, uh, but don't consider this a tablet. This is an ultrabook, a full laptop with touch. With touch that you can also use in a more comfortable pose. I, I hate saying pose. Pose form, makes me feel form, dirty. Form every factor. Time I say that. Um, position, orientation, uh, when you want to do things like just casually browse the web or watch video. You like it a lot. I like this a lot. It's what I would recommend if you're out there looking to buy an Ultrabook, whether or not you care about touch. A student, adult, grandmother, do you think this is a good machine yeah. all around? I guess that'll do it for us for Test Time Will. I'm Norm. See you guys later. Bye.